Fine. So we'll begin this class. So once again, very good day to everybody. This is Wireless Networks. And in today's class, we'll discuss about radio relay and satellite communications. Of course, we'll discuss about the satellite navigation. So this is especially for you, my uh, students and young researchers. And you can reach me at dr.christoranand at the rate of gmail.com. So before beginning the session, once again, let me thank God for giving me this opportunity to deliver this useful session to share my knowledge among my fellow national, international participants, students and young researchers. So in this class, we'll discuss about radio broadcasting. Then we'll discuss about TV broadcasting, television broadcasting. Then we'll discuss about AM amplitude modulation, clear channel stations. Then we discuss about FM frequency modulation radio relay what is the working of a repeater then we'll discuss about landline repeater radio repeater microwave re relay okay then we'll discuss about digipeter and amateur radio repeater then finally we end this class with duplexer analog and digital repeater so uh, i've already given the anywhere and work for you in the hemis please complete them so at regular intervals i'll be giving you some short videos to discuss the knowledge in our topics so this is radio broadcasting. Radio broadcasting means we hear only sound. Okay, so, okay. so the broadcasting of the audio or maybe sound may be with the related metadata, maybe by radio waves to the radio receivers belonging to the public audience. So maybe in the terrestrial radio broadcasting, the radio waves are broadcast by a land-based radio station. Maybe if you take in the case of satellite radio, the radio waves are uh, actually propagated or maybe broadcast by a satellite in the earth's orbit okay and in order to receive the content the listener should have a broadcast radio receiver which means that they should have a small radio only then they can receive the signals so stations are often affiliated with a radio network that is going to provide the content in the common radio format either in the broadcast syndication or maybe simulcast so uh, you can either go for broadcast indication or movie simulcast or you can go for both of them. Okay. Then you'll have uh, this uh, different types of modulation like AM radio stations transmitting in the amplitude modulation or maybe frequency modulation radio stations transmitting in the FM frequency modulation which are you know, older analog uh, uh, audio standards while newer uh, analog i mean digital radio stations transmit in several or digital audio standards for example like dab digital audio broadcasting hd radio like what you see with the hd tv you have hd radio and then drm digital radio mondial we have different types so television broadcasting it's a separate service that is using radio frequencies in order to broadcast the TV or maybe the video signals. So broadcasting by radio will have several forms. We'll have AM and FM, audio, I mean amplitude modulation and frequency modulation. So there are several subtypes uh, even. We'll have commercial broadcasting, non-commercial, educational, public broadcasting, non-profit varieties, maybe like community radio, student run campus radio stations and hospital radio stations. We, are, we, we will be using them according to the usage, according to their applications. Since of course broadcast on the short wave bands using this uh, amplitude modulation technolo technology that uh, can be received over thousands of miles. Even in the night also you will hear to some radio so that also uh, it comes across like different miles. So, for example, like BBC, okay, VOA, okay, VOR, uh, Dutch Well, they have transmitted shortwave to the Africa and Asian countries as well. So, these broadcasts are very sensitive to atmospheric conditions, solar activity. So, uh, all then it has to pass and reach to your place, okay. Then we'll discuss about AM. Uh, modulation i mean amplitude modulation so here the amplitude modulation stations were the earliest broadcast stations to be developed so am as you know it's amplitude modulation it is a mode of broadcasting radio waves by varying the amplitude of the carrier signals in response to the amplitude of the signal to be transmitted so here the medium wave band is used worldwide especially for the am broadcasting 
so europe also will have this long wave uh, band okay so maybe to the growing popularity of fm stereo radio stations in maybe 1980s uh, even starting of the 1990s some north american stations also began broadcasting in the am stereo format right so some uh, north american stations began broadcasting in the am stereo but this no it's not much more popular okay and very few receivers are sold okay so the signal is actually subjected to some noise some interference problems from the electrical storms or maybe lightning comes means immediately gone okay or maybe like other electromagnetic interference some radiation effects has happened immediately gone okay so this is the problem but however one advantage of using amplitude modulation is that it can be detected it can be turned into sound with the simple equipment so the advantage of the am radio signal is that it can be detected it can be tuned into uh, you know sound even with the simple equipment okay so maybe if the signal is strong enough not even a power source is actually needed just a simple equipment is needed okay so building an unpowered crystal radio receiver was the project that we dealt earlier with the case of am broadcasting so am transmissions cannot be ionospheric propagated during the day because of the strong absorption in the d layer of the ionosphere so maybe in the crowded channel environment even so which means that the power of the regional channels which is going to share the frequency must be reduced at the night or maybe it should be directionally beam in order to avoid the interference problem so that will be reducing the uh, you know the night time audience okay right so this is the radio frequency carrier wave like, like 1 million 480000 hertz for this type of signal okay through the amplitude modulator it will be going on okay so here we'll be having the sound signal to the microphone which is actually converted as the electrical image of the sound formed by the microphone so this is how the am transmissions are propagated so some stations will be having some frequencies like unshared with the other stations in north america as well so this one you can call it as the clear channel stations so many of them will be heard you know across the country even in the night time even okay so during the night the absorption largely disappears and permits a signal to travel to much more distance locations through the ionospheric reflections so however uh, you will experience some fading problem during the night okay right so this is amplitude modulation okay and this is the frequency modulation then we saw about am transmission we'll discuss about am broadcasting so here the am radio transmitters you can transmit audio frequencies up to 15 kilohertz but most of the receivers are capable of reproducing frequencies up to 5 kilohertz or maybe lesser than that so at that time that am broadcasting began you know, around like 1920s so that provided you know adequate fidelity for the microphones like we'll have like 78 revolution per minute recordings and of course loudspeakers even okay so the fidelity of the sound equipment improved or increased considerably but receivers there was not much improvement okay so reducing the bandwidth of the receivers is going to reduce the cost of the manufacturing and of course we can reduce that interference problem okay so am stations was never assigned uh, adjacent channels in the same service area okay so that is going to prevent the sideband generated by the two stations from interfering with each other so next we'll go for fm frequency modulation so that is going to occur on a vhf very high frequency airwaves in the frequency range 88 to 108 megahertz except japan and russia okay russia like the soviet union was using like 65.9 to 74 megahertz frequencies in addition to the world standard okay but japan on the contrary it uses 76 to 90 megahertz frequency band so it was uh, edwin howard armstrong who invented this wide band uh, fm radio in 1930s in order to overcome the rfi radio frequency interference problem okay so that is uh, what we had this problem over this am radio reception okay so at the same time 
greater fidelity was actually possible by space stations in the radio frequency spectrum so maybe instead of keeping it at 10 kilohertz apart so on, on the am band in the us fm channels were 200 kilohertz apart so that to reduce the problem so in other in other countries even the greater spacing was sometimes very much mandatory very much important like in new zealand they use 700 kilohertz spacing so approximately uh, um, like 7 uh, 0.7 megahertz okay right so uh, that was previously it was set around like 800 kilohertz now 700 kilohertz okay so improved fidelity made available even in the advance of the audio equipment in 1940s but you know the wide interchannel spacing was chosen in order to you know suppress the noise problem okay in the case of wideband fm so bandwidth of 200 kilohertz is actually not needed in order to accommodate the audio signal maybe like 20 kilohertz to 30 kilohertz so that is actually necessary for the narrow band fm signal so 200 kilohertz if you are using the bandwidth so that will be giving like plus or minus 75 kilohertz signal deviation from the assigned frequency maybe you will have like additional guard bands even in order to reduce or eliminate the adjacent channel interference okay so larger bandwidth definitely allows for broadcasting maybe like 15 kilohertz bandwidth audio signal maybe plus 38 kilohertz stereo subcarrier signals as well so that is going to have an additional impact on the main signal that you are transmitting then the most important one radio relay okay so maybe like a additional you know unused capacity you can use it in the broadcast uh, broadcasters even in order to transmit the utility functions maybe like background music okay gps auxiliary signals or maybe financial market data whatever maybe we have to propagate to the public okay so radio stations which cannot communicate directly due to the distance or maybe some more distance or maybe more problems okay other difficulties will be using an intermediary or maybe intermediate radio relay stations in order to relay the signals okay so radio relay is going to receive weak signals and it is going to retransmit them so maybe in a different direction okay as a stronger signal so that is the advantage an alternative so weak signals convert into stronger in an alternate uh, direction okay so examples you will have airborne radio relay microwave radio relay and communication satellite next we go into a repeater so it's an electronic device which, are going, which is going to receive the signal and of course it is going to retransmit it okay so re repeater you are going to use it for extend transmissions maybe like the signal will be having you know larger distance or maybe received on the other side of the obstruction okay so maybe receive uh, i mean the repeaters you can use it to broadcast a very similar identical signal but of course it is going to method its uh, you know its alter its method of uh, transmission for example on another frequency or maybe on a different baud rate okay so there are different types of uh, repeaters we'll have telephone repeater so that's a amplifier in the telephone line and maybe optical repeater that is concerned with the light okay so it's an opto electronic circuit that is going to amplify the light beam in the optical fiber cable and maybe you have radio repeater so that's a radio uh, receiver and transmitter so that is going to uh, retransmit a radio signal okay so here a broadcast relay station is also a repeater that is going to be used in the broadcast radio and television so maybe when the information carrying signal is passing through this communication channel it is degraded due to this loss of power so for example when the telephone call passes through the wire telephone line some of the power in the electric current which is going to represent the audio signal is actually dissipated as the heat in the resistance of the copper wire so maybe the longer the wire the more power is actually lost and smaller the amplitude of the signal at the far end okay so with a longer enough wire the call will not be audible at the other end okay so similarly the greater the distance between the radio station and receiver the weaker the radio signal and definitely the reception will be very poor so a repeater that is why you use this one it's uh, it's an electronic device in the communication channel that is going to increase the power of the signal and it is going to retransmit allowing it to travel further so because that it, it is going to amplify that signal 
it is going to need require a source of the electric power so this repeater is coming from telegraphy from the 19th century and you call it as a electro mechanical device or maybe a relay for regenerating the telegraph signals so you can use it in telephony data communications as well okay right so uh, even in uh, computer networking even this will have uh, this uh, multi port ethernet repeater okay so that you can use it in the osi model open system interconnection model then we have telephone repeater so for the range of the telephone signals in the telephone line we will be using telephone repeater so you can use it in the trunk lines that is going to carry long distance calls so in the analog uh, uh, telephone line which is having a pair of wires it is going to have an amplifier circuit made of transistors so that will be using the power from the dc current source in order to increase the power of the alternating current audio uh, signal on the transmission line so maybe since the uh, telephone is a duplex by way two way uh, communication system the wire pair will be carrying two audio signals one going in the each of the direction so telephone repeaters have to be bilateral which means that it is going to amplify the signal in both ways okay both the direction without causing feedback that is going to complicate their design considerably okay so telephone repeaters were the ancient repeaters being used and of course uh, for the amplification it was the first means okay so we will have like a submarine cable repeater okay so underwater submarine telecommunication cables we will be using submarine cable repeater and we have optical communication repeater so that is going to increase the range of the signals in the fiber optic cable so digital information travels through the fiber optic cable in the form of the short pulses of light and the light we will have like smaller particles called as a photons which can be observed or maybe scattered in the fiber right so optical communication repeater we will be having photo transistor that is going to convert light pulses into electrical signals so an amplifier in order to increase the power of the signal and an electronic filter which is going to reshape the pulses and laser to convert the electrical signal to light once again and send it to the other fiber okay so optical amplifiers you can use it for repeaters in order to amplify the light signal without needing to uh, convert it into the electrical signal okay so finally we have radio repeater so especially for the radio coverage of the radio signal okay so a radio repeater generally will be having radio receiver connected to the radio transmitter so here the receiver signal is actually amplified okay Ma amplified to the maximum extent and of course retransmitted often on another frequency in order to provide the coverage beyond that obstruction problem okay so usage of the duplexer can allow the repeater to use one antenna both for transmitting and receiving at the same time okay so here we will also go for broadcast relay station or you call it as re-broadcaster or maybe translator okay so that's a repeater that you can use it to extend the coverage of the radio or maybe coverage of the television broadcasting station so here we will be having secondary radio or maybe television transmitter and the signal from the main transmitter comes through the least telephone lines or maybe through the microwave relay. So it's a point to point telecommunication link. So we will be having microwave receiver that is going to receive the information over the beam of the microwaves from another relay station in the LOS line of sight distance and maybe microwave transmitter which passes the information on to the next station over the beam of microwaves so the network of microwave uh, relay station will be transmitting telephone calls tv programs computer data from one city to another or maybe across different continents okay so here we'll be also using passive repeater so that's a microwave relay that consists of a flat metal surface in order to reflect the microwave beam in another direction so maybe it is used to get the microwave relay signals maybe through hills mountains okay when it is not necessary to amplify the signal okay then we have cellular repeater so it's a radio repeater for boosting the cell phone reception in the limited area 
okay so the device it's just like a cellular base station okay with a directional antenna in order to receive the signal from the nearest cell tower and amplifier and of course a local antenna in order to rebroadcast the signals to the nearby cell phones okay so maybe you can use it in the downtime office buildings as well then digipeter so it's a repeater mode in the packet radio network so it's going to go for store and forward function that is going to pass on the packets of the information from one particular node to another and then we have amateur which means fresh new okay amateur radio repeater so that is being used by the amateur radio repeat, uh, operators very new radio operators to enable a two-way communication across the area definitely it will be difficult for the point to point on the uh, very high frequency and ultra high frequency so these repeaters are actually set up and maintained by the individual operators or maybe clubs even and of course it is available for any licensed amateur for use okay so maybe a hill or maybe mountain top location definitely it's a preferable location in order to construct the repeater and of course it will be maximizing the usability over the large area then we have LOS line of sight pro, uh, propagation so here radio repeaters of course it will be improving the communication range across different areas with the line of sight propagation so even without a repeater these uh, systems are limited in range by the curvature of the earth and of course the block, blocking effect of the terrain or, or maybe higher buildings so maybe a repeater on the hilltop or maybe a repeater on a tall building can definitely allow stations that are like a line of sight range to communicate much more reliably okay so radio repeaters definitely it will be acting as a translator okay from one set of radio frequencies to another maybe like a two different public service agencies in order to go for interoperation you can go for radio repeaters like you take in the case of an example police and fire service engine of the city or maybe neighboring police departments can work together with the radio repeater okay so they can provide links to the pstn public switch telephone network or maybe satellite network as an alternative path from the source to the destination then we have duplexes okay so it's a repeater station normally listens on to one frequency a and it will be transmitting the second on b okay so all mobile stations will be listening okay whether it is idle or free if it is free means it will be transmitting idle busy means it will stop okay so all mobile station will be listening for the signals on the channel b and will be transmitting on the channel a so the difference between the two frequencies may be small when you compare to the frequency of operation maybe like one percentage so often the repeater station will be using the same antenna both for transmission and reception okay so high selective filters what you call to be duplexes will be separating the faint incoming receive signal from billions of times more powerful outbound transmitted signals so sometimes like separate transmitting and receiving locations are used based on the scenario and connected by a wire line or maybe radio link then we have talk around channel so while the repeater station is actually designed for simultaneous transmission and reception mobile units need not be equipped with you know big costly duplexes because they only transmit or receive at the same time just that application only so mobile units in the repeater system may be provided with a talk around channel okay right so that will be allowing direct mobile to mobile operation on the same single channel so they can be used maybe if out of reach of the repeater system or maybe for communications that not requiring the attention of all mobiles okay so talk around channel will be used as a repeater output frequency repeater will not actually transmit any signals on its output frequency so maybe a, a, a designer will analyze this coverage area and will be selecting the repeater locations you know height elevations antenna operating frequency and of course a power level in order to make the predictable level of reliable communication over a large reliable area then finally analog and digital repeater okay so analog repeater you can use it in channels 
the transmit data in the form of the analog signal okay here voltage or current is proportional to the amplitude of the signal just like in the audio signal okay so maybe you can use it in trunk lines that is going to transmit multiple signals using the frequency division multiplexing okay so analog uh, repeaters you will be having linear amplifier and of course it will be having filters to compensate it for the frequency distortion and phase distortion in that particular line so this is the analog repeater then digital repeater so you can use it in channels that transmit data by digital signals binary digital signal so here the data is in the form of the pulses okay like this okay so it's really in the form of the pulses with only two possible values one or maybe zero okay so digital repeater is going to amplify the signal and it may retime resynchronize and maybe reshape the pulses okay so a repeater that performs retiming or resynchronizing functions you can call it as a regenerator okay so this is the analog and digital repeater